this video we're talking about radical multiplication or square root multiplication and we've been asked to simplify these various radical expressions. The formula that we're going to need to simplify these expressions is the formula I've written here which tells us that the square root of m times the square root of n is equal to the square root of m times n. In other words, when you have two square roots multiplied together, you can take the values underneath those square roots or inside those square roots and put them together under one square root. So some of these problems are going to ask us to start with the left-hand side and combine square roots to get to the right-hand side, but sometimes we're going to start with the right-hand side where we have two values multiplied together underneath one square root, and we're going to need to break them apart into the square root of m times the square root of n in order to simplify. So we're going to go back and forth both ways with this formula. Let's get into a couple examples to see what that looks like. So in this first problem we just have the square root of 3 times the square root of 2. In other words, we have two square roots multiplied together. Well the formula tells us that we can take the values underneath those square root signs and put them together under one square root. So this is going to be equal to the square root of 3 times 2 like this. 3 times 2 is 6, so we can say that this is equal to the square root of 6. What about an example like this one where we have this whole number coefficient in front of the square roots and all of these are multiplied together? Well in this case you just take the whole numbers and you multiply those together so we have these coefficients 3, 4, and 2 so we take 3 times 4 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, and the whole number coefficient will be 24. And then we take the square roots and multiply those together separately, just like we did in this first example. So we do the square root of 2 times the square root of 12 times the square root of 3, which is just going to be the square root of 2 times 12 times 3. And right, our formula tells us that we can do that. We're multiplying square roots together. We can take the values underneath those square roots and put them together under one square root. We just multiply these numbers together here. So when we do that, we'll get 24 times the square root. 2 times 12 is 24. 24 times 3 is 72. So we get square root of 72. And now we just want to see if we can simplify this square root at all. At the beginning of this problem, we basically started with the left-hand side of our formula, right? We had separate square roots and we wanted to multiply them together so we combine them so we went from this left hand side to the right hand side. Now we have the right hand side but we want to see if we can break this apart in a different way in order to get perfect squares. So the thing we need to realize is that 72 is 9 times 8. 9 is a perfect square which means it's a great thing to factor out of 72. So if instead of 72 we call this 24 times the square root of 9 times 8, because 9 times 8 is 72, then we can say 24 times the square root of 9 times the square root of 8, and we know that the square root of 9 is 3, so this square root of 9 here is going to become 3, and we can then multiply the 3 by 24. So 3 times 24 gives us 72, so we end up with 72 times the square root of 8. But we're still not done here, because what we need to realize is that 8 is the same thing as 4 times 2. So we can call this 74 times the square root of 4 times 2 and then using our formula here we can break this 4 and 2 into separate square roots and get 72 square root 4 square root 2. We know that the square root of 4 is 2 so we take 2 and we multiply it by 72 and we get 144 and we leave our square root of 2 and we can't reduce the square root of 2 at all so that's our final answer. Let's do another example like this one. We have 4 square root of 3 times 6 square root of 6. Just like here, we're going to multiply our whole number coefficients together. So 4 times 6 gives us 24. And then we're going to separately multiply our square roots together. The square root of 3 times the square root of 6 is the same as the square root of 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18, so we get 24 root 18. Now we need to realize that 18 is the same thing as 9 times 2, so we'll say 24 times square root of 9 times 2. Since we have two numbers multiplied together underneath our square root, using our formula going from right to left, we know we can break these into two separate square roots. So we get 24 times root 9 times root 2. We know that the square root of 9 is 3, so we get 24 times 3, or 72, and we end up with 72 root 2 as our final answer. If we look at this example, 4 square root of 2 times the quantity, 3 square root 2 plus 5, this is just distributive property where we're multiplying this 4 root 2 by each of the values inside this binomial term. So when we distribute this 4 root 2 across both terms, we'll deal with each one individually. 4 root 2 times 3 root 2, again we take our whole number coefficients 4 and 3 and we multiply those together to get 12. 
root 2 times root 2, we can say the square root of 2 times 2 instead, combining them into one square root. And then multiplying 4 root 2 times 5, we take the whole number coefficients here, 4 and 5, and multiply those together. So we say plus 20. And then square root 2 is the only root there, so we just say root 2. If we multiply 2 times 2 inside of our square root here, we get 4. So 12 root 4 plus 20 root 2. The square root of 4 is 2, so we can say 2 times 12 or 24, and we'll get 24 plus 20 root 2. What about this example at the bottom here? We have the square root of 108. Well, we know that 108 is the same as 9 times 12, so we can turn this into the square root of 9 times 12, like this. We can use our formula here to say that when we have two values multiplied together inside one square root, we can break them into their own square root. So then this becomes the square root of 9 times the square root of 12. We know that the square root of 9 is 3, so we end up with 3 square root of 12. Then we look at 12 and say 12 is the same thing as 4 times 3. So we can say 3 times the square root of 4 times 3. Haven't changed anything still. And now again using our formula to break these into two separate square roots, we'll get 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. We know that the square root of 4 is 2, so we say 2 times 3 gives us 6, and we end up with 6 square root 3 as our final answer. Two more examples here. We'll do a similar one, the square root of 50,000. Well, we know we can just break this into the square root of 5 times 10,000. 5 times 10,000 is the same as 50,000, so we haven't changed anything. Now we know we can break these into their own square roots, so we get square root of 5 times square root of 10,000. The square root of 10,000 is 100, and the easy way to do that whenever you have multiples of 10, you just count the number of zeros. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros. So that means the square root of this number is going to have half that number of zeros. So this one has 4 zeros, which means its square root is going to have two zeros. The multiple of 10 that has two zeros is of course 100, so the square root of 10,000 is 100. So we can say 100 times the square root of 5 is our final answer for that problem. Looking at our last example here, this problem combines radical addition with radical multiplication. When we're adding two radicals together, the number underneath the radicals has to be exactly the same in order for them to be like terms such that they can be added together. In this case, 18 and 8 are not equal, so we might think that we can't combine these two radicals because they're different numbers. But what we need to do is use what we know about radical multiplication first and reduce these. So we know that 18 is the same as 9 times 2, so we can call this the square root of 9 times 2. We know that 8 is 4 times 2, so we can call this the square root of 4 times 2. And now using our formula here for radical multiplication, we can break these into separate square roots. So we can say root 9 times root 2 plus root 4 times root 2. The square root of 9 is 3, so we call this 3 root 2. And the square root of 4 is 2, so we call this 2 root 2, and now we have identical square roots, so these are like terms that can be combined. When we do the addition, we have 3 square root of 2's, we add that to 2 square root of 2's, which gives us 5 square root of 2's for the final answer for this example.